Are we live? Are we live? All right. Okay, so we are actually doing this on Facebook Live, too, so I wanted to make sure everything was recording. And if y'all have questions tonight, just ask me, and then I'm going to um, answer, re-ask the question and then answer it so that anybody who's watching this can can do this at home. This means that you can go back and watch this later if you need to, like if you had a question or something like that, okay? Um, but a couple things I want to do. First of all, thank you so much for coming. As seniors, you are one step ahead of all the other seniors because you're going to have all of this information earlier in the year. And Kevin and I talk to our seniors constantly about like, it starts early. <laughs> it's just barely senior year and you got to get started on this so that you don't get behind. So we want to share all of that with you. So one thing to note is this that I gave you that says your senior to-do list, this is basically exactly what we've got on our website for you, okay? We tried to make all of this really similar in the same order and consistent so that it's easy for you to follow because I feel like it's a lot of steps and it can feel overwhelming, all right? But just like think about if you were going to go buy a car, you're not just going to walk out and like, oh, I'm just going to buy this car and then have cash and hand it over. That's generally not how it works. Usually you would research, you would find a car that's going to be reliable, that's going to make sense for you, one that you can afford right now, one that you like. You're going to do some research and then you're going to figure out how to finance it. And there are steps to that, right? Same deal. College is an investment. There are steps to it. But we do one thing at a time. So all you have to do is one thing at a time. And we are here to walk along with you. And that's the main thing I want you to walk away from this tonight is thinking, okay, I got help with this. And all I got to do is one step at a time. And you can do that. All right? We're really proud of y'all. If you're to this point and you're heading to college, we're really proud of you. I hope you can take a minute and just really be proud of yourself if you're already heading to college. So we're going to go through this. This is Kevin Colick. He's a senior counselor that all of y'all probably have dealt with. My early college students know me, Ms. Thomas, and I'm also the director of the program. Um, and so we're going to try to walk through this just for seniors page and also show you on the website. The one thing about the website that's different from this handout we gave you is that it has links on here. So all the things we're going to talk about, you'll have links to further resources, okay? So, or links, if we're, if we're asking you to do something on here, the link is right there on the website, all right? And we got to this website by going to our TRIO Talent Search page here at the Cleveland Community College website. So it's on the back of this to-do list. It has our website on there, uh, or sorry, at the very top of the to-do list, it has our website on there, so you won't have trouble finding it. Yeah, and if you just put in Google TRIO Talent Search, CCC or Cleveland Community College and hit search it'll bring up our website if you've never been to our website too this is if you have a friend or family member who you feel like would benefit they can go online and apply out on our website um, there's some information who's eligible and then this is what's happening and if you click on that that's going to go to our fall calendar and it's going to show you what we're doing this fall all the different dates are on there um, we've also got this is some other resources, our tutoring, which is online. It's a free online tutoring resource for our TRIO students. The link is on there. And then this is the Just for Seniors page, and that's the page we're on tonight, okay? Just for Seniors is all the information for you to apply, all right? So we're going to start with the very first thing at the top of this list, and the very first thing you got to do is decide, do I need to go to a two-year school or a four-year school? And I'm going to briefly hit this, and then if you have questions later, you just ask, all right? But mainly, between a two-year school and a four-year school, the first thing you got to do is decide what kind of degree you're wanting to get. I had a girl one time telling me, I'm, I'm so excited, I'm going to A&T, A&T, whatever. I was like, awesome, what are you going to major in? She said, cosmetology. And I was like, ooh, they don't have that at A&T. That's a degree that you get at a community college. Because some degrees you get at a community college. So you have to know what degree you want to get first before you know if you need a two-year or four-year school, okay? Some programs, some, some jobs that you want do require a four-year degree. So, for instance, if you want to be a teacher, you do have to have a four-year degree to take, your, to take your exam and to be a teacher. You have to have a four-year degree, okay? But nursing is really tricky because if you want to be a nurse, there are actually several different paths you can take. You can start at a community college. You could start here. You could do a two-year degree here and get your registered nursing degree and be an RN. Then you could go on to a four-year school and get your BSN, which is your bachelor's of nursing. You can go on somewhere and get your master's of nursing or be a nurse practitioner. You can go on and get your doctorate in nursing. But you see what I'm saying? Like sometimes you go to a community college, sometimes you go to a four-year school. 
a lot of trade things like welding um, and automotive repair and cosmetology, esthetician, barbering, um, vet tech, um, dental hygienist. A lot of those degrees are at a two-year school. So even if, for my early college students, even if you have an associate's degree when you finish high school, you might still end up at a community college if you want to do some of these things, okay? Got questions about that and you're not sure about your particular thing, then just ask us, all right? Some reasons other people want to start at a two-year school and transfer is because it saves you money. So for those of you who are not in early college, you may be interested in coming to CCC. It doesn't have to be CCC. You go to Isothermal. That's over in Forest City. You can go to Gaston. If you lived in Kings Mountain, it'd be about the same distance probably. All the community colleges are about the same price. So if you don't know this, community college is going to cost you, I don't know, $2,500 a semester probably. But you live at home, right? If you get financial aid, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but if you're a low-income family and you get financial aid, it likely will cover your community college completely. Some students get a refund check, and that can pay for a, com for a uh, computer or something like that. So, I mean, it's a really great option. And for some students who say, yeah, but i got to get a four-year degree because I want to be the teacher or the counselor or the whatever, cool, you can still start at a community college and do your associates, which is all your general education stuff, then they help you transfer to a four-year school, which would mean you do about two years community college and then two years at a four-year school instead of doing all four years at a four-year school. So a four-year school can cost you between fifteen to twenty-five, up to $75,000 a year, depending on the school we're talking about. A Duke University, a Davidson, um, those are about $75,000 for one year. Okay, but now others in the state are much more affordable. A Western Carolina is going to be more like 16 or 17. That's before your financial aid. A lot of you who would go to a Western Carolina could maybe go for free, okay, with your financial aid and scholarships. All right, so that's a little bit about two-year versus four-year. Before we move off of that, anybody got a general question about two-year versus four-year college? I hope that made sense to you, remembering that community college, a two-year college, whether it's Gaston, Isothermal here, you will live at home, right? So you're not paying any of the room or board or a meal plan or any of that, right? You're only paying for tuition, and community college tuition is very low. It's very affordable, okay? So that's how we start with that. Now, Kevin's going to tell you about starting by getting organized, all, all right. right? Now, this to me is one of the most important pieces because it kind of leaks into everything we're going to talk about because you're going to feel like you're going crazy before December hits. So from now to December, you're going to feel like you're losing your mind, okay? But if you get organized, every other senior that's not in trio be running around the building like a crazy person, but not you, because you came to the senior meeting. You're getting yourself organized. You're using the tools and the tactics that we told you guys to use, right? So the first three tips that you see on here is number one, use your phone or some kind of note-taking system that is reliable that you can always access, okay, so that you can put down passwords. Look at me. Y'all look at me. Look at me. I need every student in here to look me in the eyeball. Eyeball me. If you don't write down passwords, I'm telling you, you're going to feel like you're going crazy because you're going to have to have probably 10 different passwords depending on how many schools you apply for. Every school you apply to, you're going to have a password and you're going to have a password for two or three different portals. And we're going to talk about what those are in a little bit, but these little areas where you need to go in and look at information. So you're going to have multiple passwords. You're going to have passwords for the FAFSA. You're going to have passwords for everything. You're going to be all passworded out. And don't trick yourself. Don't sit there and say, oh, I'm going to use the same one for all of them, so I'm good. Nah, don't do that. I'm telling you. You're going to be sitting down with me. I'm going to say, log into your FAFSA. Oh, it ain't working, Mr. Collin. I don't know what's going on with it. Nah, uh -uh. we're not going to do that. Write it down, okay? That's important. The next thing is get in the habit of checking email. Say email. Say email. Say email. email. I'm making you say it like that 
because you need to check. You're going to get emails from us. You're going to get emails from your senior counselor. You're going to get emails from the three to five schools that you apply to. If you don't check your emails, you're going to put yourself in the bucket of the students who forget to do things, who miss deadlines, who miss out on money. You can miss out on money if you don't check your email. They're trying to give you free money, and you sitting there chilling at cookout, not checking your email. Now we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that, okay? So make sure we're checking our email, and I give y'all one little tip for free. If you make a brand-new Gmail account, make a brand-new Gmail account that nobody knows about except the three to five schools you're applying to, then all the random emails you're getting from schools you never even applied to, like Brevard has been sending you emails since you've been in 10th grade trying to get you to apply, yeah, they won't be able to get to you, right? Because you'll have a Gmail account they won't know about. The only ones that will know about it is the schools you actually applied to, okay? That'll make your life a little easier, okay? Now, the last thing is make a list of activities and accomplishments and honors and volunteering and work for the last four years, OK, there's a sheet back there that you can use. I think we got one more left. We ran out. But Miss Thomas can send out one. Maybe we'll just send out one when we get done out to all the seniors. But you don't have to use our sheet. Some of uh, the schools, the senior counselors have a sheet that they've already given you. I think Chris, Miss Francis has one. And it's uh, it's a, a, a sheet that has like the four years on there. and You can put down all the things that you've done. OK, so. That's important because you're going to have to use that when you say you want someone to write you a recommendation letter, right? People are going to have to write you recommendation letters when you apply for a college, okay? And so you don't just want to say, hey, teacher so-and-so, can you write me a recommendation letter? And I'm going to be like, okay. And now what are they going to put on there? They don't know what you did. They don't know how you did it. They don't know what jobs you had, what volunteer experiences you've had. They don't know how to highlight you so that you look so beautiful that the school just says, you know what? That letter was so great. I'm going to have to accept them into my school. OK, so you'll send them this form to the person you're asking to do the recommendation. And then now the person can access that form, look at that information and write you an in-depth just beautiful, lovely recommendation letter, okay? So, but you'll also need that information when you're applying, just doing a regular admissions application. You'll need it when you're applying for scholarships, so you need to be gathering that information, okay? So, so just keep it somewhere. If you have a Word document like that somewhere, you have yes. a Word doc or Google doc or whatever, and you have all of this information, you can write it down however you want, but different things are going to ask for it different ways. Yes. But you don't want to remember it every time. You don't want to be like, mm -mm. oh, yeah, what did I do in ninth grade? Yeah, was I in beta club in 10th grade too? Like, you know, every time it would just drive you crazy. Yep. So if you have it all on there and you're just copying and pasting, your life is going to be so much easier. So sit down, take the time to create that form, okay? So that's you getting organized because yep. like Mr. Cog was saying, lots of portals, lots of passwords, that kind of thing. And you don't want to be sitting down with your parent one night trying to do something and you can't actually do the thing because you can't remember the dang password. It's so annoying. All right. So that's our biggest tip for y'all probably tonight. All right. So moving on to finding the university that fits you best. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to. Sorry, scrolling down, getting organized. There it is. That's all that stuff. Finding the university that, that fits you best. We have the three websites, and I'll let Mr. Kyle click those as we're talking. But basically, you're going to want to find a school that you feel good about. But the most important thing is they have to have your major, okay? Um, I know some of y'all have told me your majors, and it's something general like I want to do business, biology, um, psychology. Those majors are at most every school. OK, so like if you want to do business, you could probably take your pick and go to any school. Some schools will have a better business program than other schools or like education. I want to do education. Some schools are known for their education, but most of them are going to have that program. But if you want to do something a little bit different, like forensic science, not every school has that degree. So you have to make sure that you research the college and you look and make sure they have your degree. OK. Other things you're going to look for in a college. Tell me, what else will you look for in a college? The graduation rate. That's really important. Some schools have kind of pitiful graduation rates. Do you want to go to that college? That doesn't mean it's going to be you. You can still graduate. But if they have a really low graduation rate, you might go, hmm, what does this tell me? Okay, what else do we want to look for? Well, test scores are important. 
can I get into this college? Some scores really, some schools really do look at test scores. I was actually, I'm glad you said that though. I was actually telling somebody tonight, they were asking about our test scores optional. And when I talk about test scores, I'm talking about like the ACT. Y'all all took the ACT as a junior, right? So you all have a score. You might not remember it, but you have an ACT composite score, okay? If you start researching some of these colleges, like for Chapel Hill, you're going to look and they're going to say their average ACT score is between 28 and 32. You might have made a 19 or a 20 on your ACT. So you might be like, oh, well, I can't go to Chapel Hill then. Maybe, but maybe you don't report your test score. And maybe your scores, your, uh, your GPA is amazing and off the charts and you've done tons of volunteer work and you're awesome in all the other areas. If you are a, in a North Carolina school, which is like Chapel Hill, Western Carolina, all of those North Carolina school systems, uh, East Carolina, UNC Wilmington, UNC Charlotte, all uh, East, uh, Winston-Salem State, a and all of those schools are currently test optional this year, which means you do not have to send your ACT score if your GPA is above a 2.6. And I'm pretty sure almost all of y'all's is, because I know all of y'all's ACTs, I mean, uh, your GPAs. So, so if your GPA is above a 2.6, you don't have to send your test score. And if, you're, if your ACT is below a 20, I would consider it. You can ask us. We can help you with that, okay? But that's something to know about those schools. So we're looking at the university that fits you best, the graduation rates and all that. But it's also important, like, are you somebody who doesn't want to be too far away from home? You might not want to go to UNC Wilmington. That's about four and a half hours, okay? But if you don't mind that, that's fine. So you need to know where is the school, how far is it from home, and also the size of it. My daughter's a senior this year, too. She's at Crest. And she told me straight off, I'm not going to Chapel Hill. It's too big. She's been there before. It feels like a city. She don't like cities. Okay. That's not her thing. That's fine. You don't want to go somewhere you're not going to feel comfortable and you're not going to succeed. So maybe she would look at, she's looking at smaller private schools because that's what she's interested in. But if you want a smaller school and you're not sure about it, some of these um, resources we showed you, they will tell you the sizes, but we can also help you understand like, hey, you're looking for a mid-range school that's sort of like not in the middle of the city? Have you looked at Western Carolina, you know? Oh, you like a city? How about UNC Charlotte, right? Smack dab in the middle. Or, you, or Greensboro, UNC Greensboro. Or a and that's right there in Greensboro too. So we can, talk, we can talk you through some of these, okay? Um, so we're here to help. Questions about finding the right college? And I'm going to say one more thing, too. Um, this, I was clicking through the resources. This last one right here that I'm on, co um, College Simply, you can look up colleges according to your SAT, ACT, or GPA. Because, look, we got to be realistic now. Your GPA will go up at the end of this year, but you're going to be using the GPA you have right now to apply to school. So you can go in here in the College Simply, and we can make, say, realistic. Everybody say it. Realistic. Really? We're going to get a realistic match for the schools we can actually apply to right now. Okay, so if you just click, if you know what your GPA is and say it's a 3.7 and you click here, find GPA matches, it's going to bring up some fancy cars. <laughs> and then it's going to bring up all the schools in the country that you can apply to. And if you go over here to the left, and you type in North Carolina, it'll bring up all the schools in North Carolina you can go to with that GPA. And then when you click on, you can look at the information. So make sure you do this because we want a realistic idea. Like, listen, if you got a 3.2, you're not going to Chapel Hill. I love you. I love you to life. I do. I do. I love you. But we got to be realistic about our GPA and the schools. If you got 3.2, there's plenty of schools you can go to, right? Just Duke and Wake and, and Harvard's not going to be one of them, right? All right, so there we go. All right, one more thing about that, and he mentioned uh, out-of-state schools. If any of y'all are interested in going to an out-of-state school, I've heard a couple of you mention it, um, you should know there's something called in-state tuition and out-of-state tuition. And in-state tuition means you've lived in North Carolina and you paid taxes here. So those schools, because you're a North Carolina resident, are going to be cheaper for you, okay? North Carolina schools. NC State, Chapel Hill, Western Carolina, East Carolina, um, all of these that are in the system, A&T, Winston-Salem State, and you can ask us if you wonder. Um, but out of state, even just in South Carolina, you try to go to USC upstate, guess what? You're going to pay out-of-state tuition, and it's almost double usually. 
So just keep that in mind. You may be a top-notch student who's going to get a giant scholarship and it won't matter. And that's true. It can happen. Like we have students who, if you can get into Duke University or if you're a low-income student and you can get into Chapel Hill, you'll actually go for free because they have scholarships that offset it. But, you know, we have to, like you said, we have to be realistic about some of this. So if you wonder if that's you, if you want help with any of that, ask us because we can help you with those things, okay? All right. So now Kevin's going to talk about college, college tours. tours. So listen, college tours are a little different now, right? When you were in Trio and you were in sixth and seventh grade, you went to college tours. You had fun. You ran around, jumped on the trees. We gave you free food. But now you're doing a college tour this year because that's the school you applied to. That's the school you're thinking to yourself, I want to step on that campus and make sure I actually like this place. Because you may love it on paper, and you may love that people are talking about it, but then you get on campus, and the bell, and not the bell, there's no bell, but in between classes, you're at NC State, and it looks like there's one grillion people walking around, shoulder to shoulder, and it looks like NYC, and you're like, oh no, this is not the place for me. I need something a little smaller, right? So it's really good to get on campus, okay? So you can do... Virtual tours. We have two websites on there where you can do virtual tours. You can put in the school you want to look at, and it'll make you more familiar with it. Here is a little tip. No matter what school you're visiting, if you put it into one of these websites, you'll be more familiar with the campus when you actually land on the campus. So I would suggest using one of these websites, even if you scheduled um, an in-person tour, to just get on the website and just kind of look through it a little bit, and it'll help you out to, so you don't get lost or whatever, what have you, or you'll know where you want to go and what you want to do. The other thing is um, what you want to do is um, during the year, Ms. Thomas will set up college tours for you guys to the places you want to take a tour for. So maybe you want to go to Western, but you've never set foot on the campus and your parent cannot bring you. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to email Miss Thomas and say, Hey, I need to go here. I need to go there. She may, you may even send out something, I guess, just kind of letting everybody know where do you want to go. So when you put that on there, we'll probably get a group of people together. We've done that. Every senior year, we've taken five or six students over here, 10 students over here, three students over here, okay, to get on a campus. But listen, this is not play play. We go in there because we apply, because we're thinking we're going to go there, and I need to get on the campus to really figure it out, okay? Um, the other thing is that you, as parents and student, you can just get on the website, and you can schedule a tour with the admissions department. And they'll do an admissions tour, right? And then you'll show up. They'll have a person sometimes with a mic backpack on. And they'll be walking around showing you everything, answering questions. They're subject matter experts because they work there. And that's what they do. They get paid to show people around. There'll be other groups of kids around. And usually when they're done, they sit down and you can ask questions. Okay? So. Those are the ways that you can do college tours. But listen, it's so important to do tours right now because you don't want to be on a campus that you don't like. I'll leave you with one more example. We went to Asheville, UNC Asheville, and we were walking around. And if you've ever been on UNC Asheville, it's like this. This is the terrain, like this, up and down, up and down, right, because it's up in the mountains. And one girl said, I'm so glad I came on this tour because I would never go to school here. Only reason she knew that is because she came on campus. Now, mind you, she could have got in because she had the grade point average. But what if she applied, did everything, got there, first day of class, and she was like, oh, Lord, I got to get up out of here. <laughs> right? So you don't want that, right? So make sure, make sure you do tours. If you have questions about that, email us or ask us. Yeah, please let me know. if you. Now, I'm happy to take you on a tour if your parent can't get you there. But parents, I really do encourage you, if you're able, you'll want to see it too. Your kid's going to be living there. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. you'll want to go on the campus and see what the dorms look like. And, you know, you'll want to know about the safety of campus and understand the dining halls and how it works and all that. So if you can go and take an official tour with your student, that's a great thing to do. And you just set it up. You go on the admissions website. You set up the tour um, and they'll take you on an official one. Sometimes they give you a T-shirt or they'll give you information or whatever. And it's a really great opportunity. Like I said, if you can't get there, I'm happy to take you. I'm not trying to take people to NYU or anything like that. But, you know, if it's within driving distance and I can make it happen, I promise I'll do my best to make it happen for now, you. Now, okay? you really want to go there? We might no. What the no. <laughs> do not have Maybe the Maybe like University of Hawaii. I think one of my kids <laughs> want to go check. there. Yes. Okay. So the next thing is the residency. It's on the next page, I guess, on the back of that front one. It's called the North Carolina Residency Determination Services, RDS. 
basically what I talked about a minute ago, are you in state or out of state? The reason this is important, you have to have your residency determined, like they have to prove that you're a North Carolina resident, is because that way you get in-state tuition, okay? Even for a community college, it's a difference of almost double. So like if you messed up your residency and you didn't get in-state tuition and you try to come to CCC, you're going to pay twice as much as somebody who did their residency properly, okay? The residency thing is not really hard, but it is kind of a pain. So there are several things that they ask you to have, like I did it for my, my daughter's a senior this year too, so we just did this the other day. And they ask for parent information, they ask for your social security number, they ask for the kid's social security number, all that kind of stuff. So when you sit down to do it, make sure you have all that in hand. And then they ask for like your vehicle registration or like I think we had to put my husband's um, license number in and I don't know if sometimes you have to have some kind of vehicle registration number or something, but anyway, something like that. And then you submit it and it just gives you a residency certification number. And that is what you're going to put into your applications. And all of them will ask for it. So you need to write that down. That list, you're keeping all your passwords and stuff. You put your little residency certification number, your RCN number, and you have it with everything else. Okay. This is just one of the steps. Okay. And then there are some tips on here that I'm not going to read to you, but there are a couple things that you really want to be careful about when you sit down to do that. So that it like doesn't become much harder for you. Okay. Next. All right. And one more thing about that, please, please, please. If you don't have a typical family, a typical living situation, don't just try to put on some information in there and like, Oh, we're going to figure this out. And cause listen, it will kick it into appeal. And when it kicks it into appeal, it'll act like you're out of state and then you're going to have to pay a whole bunch of money. And if you can't get the appeal figured out, they're going to keep you as an out of state student. So if you don't have a typical living situation, your address, you live with your grandparents, your parents are separated, whatever it is, and you're not sure in that, ask you a question and you're like oh I don't know what I should do email me email Miss Thomas call us figure it out you can leave it and get out of it and go back in it later okay so let's not make that mistake all right mm -hmm. so next thing is the uh, the FAFSA all right so submit your free application for federal student aid this is key because maybe some of y'all got it like that, but it costs on average $35,000 to go to an in-state school, $35,000 a year, right, to go to, a, to go to an in-state school. So unless you got that $35,000 just sitting in your back pocket and you're ready to bust it out, you're going to have to do this fast fight. Even if you do, you got to do the fast fight, okay? So make sure you get it done and you fill it out okay it will not open till i think they're saying december 1 but that may change and we'll let you guys know obviously we're not in control of that date or the timing where they release that so you can actually access it that's the federal government and if you know anything about last year it got a little wonky and crazy last year so just kind of put a seat belt on and get ready it might be a little crazy once you get in there and it might be a hard you'll have a hard time accessing information and putting information in and and all these different things if you're having a hard time email call okay um, again, if you don't have a typical family situation, be very careful how you're putting information in. If you need help, call us, email us, okay? You can talk with your, uh, your guidance counselors too, your senior counselor. They'll be able to help you out with that process as well. Um, what do we want to say on here? Well, we have Go a ahead. lady here at CCC. Well, we have several financial aid experts here at CCC. Yes. If you just hate this kind of stuff and you don't want to do it by yourself, Come up here and do it. Yeah. Sit down with them. They'll get you on a computer as mm -hmm. long as you have an account. So the parent will have to create an account and the student will create an account. Yep. Okay. As long as y'all have accounts and you come up here and sit down with, they'll walk you through it and you could bring your tax information with you. So sometimes it's as easy as clicking a button and it, it uploads it from, from the IRS. And then sometimes people end up having to put it in put manually it in yeah. from their taxes from, they use it from two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, all that to say, it can feel a little bit tricky, but you don't have to do it by yourself. Like you could sit down one night, some of y'all are probably great at this, and you can sit down and you can start messing with it and you can make it happen. A note about this is your FAFSA you do every year you're in college. Mm -hmm. It's real easy after the first year because you just like resubmit kind of, but you do have to do it every year. So you keep that password somewhere because you won't use it from a lot of years. And if you go into grad school, you're still going to be using it. Like yep. parents, it's going to be the same one. And if you end up with a second kid in college, that account you used for first kid, you'll use for a second kid. Yeah. 
So keep up with it, right? Yeah. So if you already have an account as a parent who already has a kid in college, then you're just going to do the same account, right? Yeah. For you, it should be easier. But um, a note about that too, if you have more than one kid in college, it helps financially. So that's helpful. Oh, yeah. Okay. And parent too, if you have applied for a two-year school or four-year school before and did the FAFSA in the past and you have an account, it's going to want you to use that old account because it's accessing your social security number and all that. So just know it's going to ask you to do some things and access some emails and old stuff, but you'll just work through it and, and, and you'll get it done. Um, and then B, Vogus, her information is down there for you guys if you do want to come up here and do that. But you'll have to create two accounts, right? There's going to be a parent account and a student account, all right? A parent account and a student account. And the parent, you have to go in and make sure you confirm all your information or we'll hold up the process. Same thing with student. Go in, confirm your information through email, whatever it asks you to do. So make sure you can move on. Okay, so, so now. So let's say y'all get stuck on a step, one of these steps, this, the FAFSA, the residency or whatever. Pause where you are. Mm -hmm. Email one of us. Ask the question. If I can't find, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for you and I will email you back and then you can move forward with the process. Okay. I don't want any of y'all getting stuck somewhere and being like, forget it. Never mind. I was going to go to college, but I'm not even doing that anymore. No, 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 no. That's not <laughs> what we're doing. All right. We are here to help. You do not have to throw up your hands like that. I promise. Okay. All right, so the FAFSA. So next we're going to talk about applying for college. <laughs> you feel like we'd have gotten to that already, right? We'd have gotten to that. Yeah. To that. <laughs> so now you're going to apply to college. And here's the thing. If you're going to a two-year school, um, a community college, that process is pretty simple, okay? It's usually on online application. Um, it will take you one sitting. Community colleges do not look at your test scores. They don't actually care about your GPA. You just apply and you get in. For some of you who would like to go to a four-year school, like a certain four-year school, and currently your GPA is not quite there, that is another thing to consider. You can start at a two-year school. You can work your tail off one year, bring up your GPA, and then you can transfer from the community college. That's another option. If you were like always said you wanted to go at A&T and now all of a sudden you don't quite have the GPA to get in, you can still apply and try, but let's say you don't get in. That's okay. Community college for a year or, or even two and then transfer. Okay. So that's another option. But if you're applying to a four-year school, there are a couple ways to do it. The first is something called Common App and we have the link on there. If you're on our website, you can go and it'll take you straight to it. That's sort of like one hub and you put all your information what classes you took, uh, what all that stuff that we told you to put on that one sheet, like what awards you got, what um, things you were involved in with school, and what volunteering you did, all that stuff. And you're going to enter all of that information. And then you're going to select schools. So let's say we select Chapel Hill, NC State, Western Carolina, A&T. Okay? It will send it to all four of those schools through that one hub. So that's nice. You don't have to go in and do a separate application for each of those schools. So that's really helpful. So Common App is one place to do it. There are other places you can do it. You can go through CFNC, which is the College Foundation of North Carolina. That's actually the site you go to to do your residency. That's another option. Um, or you can go through the college's website. If you go to, let's say you're interested in a smaller private school like Gardner-Webb, you might go to Gardner-Webb's website, and they'll somewhere on admissions, they'll be like, apply here. And they'll have an application. So sometimes they'll have you apply directly through their website. Or sometimes they'll send you to Common App. Or they'll send you to CFNC. What I'm telling you is there are actually different places you can apply for these colleges. Okay? Most of these colleges do have an application fee. Okay? And some of them, the application fee is higher than others. For instance, I think NC State's is maybe $85 just to submit the application to the stupid school. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. But let me tell you what, you're in TRIO. You know what that means? There's a place on there where you put, I'm in TRIO. And it says somewhere on Common App, it's like, are you in a community organization, blah, blah, blah. And you say, yes, I'm in TRIO Talent Search. And you know what that means? It waives your application fees. You're welcome. Isn't that great? That's a great thing because that can be really expensive, right? So we also have another little waiver form thing too. If there's, this, if it's acting weird and it won't do it or whatever, I have another waiver that I'll send. So I don't want you to have to pay all these application fees. 
So you make sure that you put TRIO on there, and then if you have any trouble, you email one of us, and we'll figure that out for you. Yes? Is there a limit to how many applications that I can check off? Is there a limit to how many applications you can do? There's not technically. Um, it might only allow you to do like 10 on Common App or something like that. But if you want to apply to a whole lot of schools, you can. Um, you will then have to keep up with all of those admissions portals. <laughs> So I will tell you, like, if you applied to, let's say, 10 colleges, it submits the application to that college, and then you're going to get an email from that college saying, oh, we want you to create an admissions portal at our college. So every one of those 10 schools now, you have an admissions portal to keep up with. So it's not that you can't, but it does get hairy. It does get really challenging to keep up with that. So... Yeah. I really usually recommend to students, maybe you have a dream school somewhere. I just want to see if I can get into Duke, all right? So apply. That's whatever. If you want to do that and you put it on there and you think you might have a chance, cool, do that. But then have your top two, three, maybe four schools that you're like, I know it has my degree. I know I can get in. I feel pretty confident I can get in. I know I like the school I have visited. It's the right size. It's the right distance for me and all of that. I think I can afford it with financial aid. Those are the ones that you really want to focus on, right? And then you might have a backup school <laughs> in mind. You know, like, oh, I overestimated myself and something happened and I didn't get into these. So we're going to drop back and punt. We're going to figure this out, okay? But all that to say, you, you can't, all of y'all can go to college somewhere. I can say that definitively, all right? Whether it's starting at community college or going straight to a four-year school, all y'all going to go to college somewhere. We're going to make sure of it, Okay. All right. Free application week, too. So free application week on CFNC. We have a link on the website for that. So that's from October the 21st to October the 27th. You can submit an application for free during that week. Okay? So if you know what school you want to apply to, I suggest, and you know you want to do it during free application week, go in, start setting up some of your information, get your account set up, get everything set up so you're not having to put together all the information during that week. But you can get it done, and they've made it a little bit longer so you can get it done through the weekend, okay? So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about that, let us know. But it's right there. There's a link for it right there. If you go back here, see right there where it says free application week and information to walk you through the application waiver for Common App is right there as well. And again, all these links are on our website. Like they're available to you at any time. So you don't have to remember any of this. This is all right there. The link is right there to click. It's just if you get stuck, you email us or, or, or text us or whatever, okay? Okay. All right, the next thing is um, official transcripts. transcripts. Kevin's going to tell you yeah. So one. official transcripts. This part is easy, okay? So if you want to do your transcripts, it depends on what school you're at. Some schools, if you just go to the secretary at the front of the guidance counseling area, um, I know they do this at Burns a lot. Um, if you just say, hey, there's a school I apply to and I need my transcript to go there, then she'll send it for you. Or you can talk with your, your um your senior counselor, and then you say, hey, I need it sent here, and they'll say, okay, boom, I'll send it for you, okay? Some schools are a little different. Some schools will direct you to this website right here, CFNC, to request your high school transcript. When you click on there, you put in your account, and then you'll put in your information for your school, and then you'll hit the button, boom, and you'll send it for free, okay? A lot it'll, of y'all, sorry to interrupt, no, a good. lot of y'all have a CFNC account, okay? If you don't have a CFNC account, you can create one. But if you do, if somebody along the way had you create one, a CFNC account, don't do another one. Okay? No, if not, you already please. have login information and you just can't remember your stuff, retrieve the information. Because if you create a new one, it's going to mess everything up. Okay? So don't do a new one. So CFNC, though, is easy. And you do send these college, I mean, these uh, high school transcripts for free. And so it'll send it to the schools. Now, here's the thing. You're currently a senior, right? You started your senior year. You're in classes. You're making grades and all that. So you have the whole rest of this year to be making grades and getting your... So at the end of this year, when, they, when you finish high school and you actually have a graduation date on your transcript, wherever you go to college, they're going to need your a final official transcript. So let's say you've looked at several schools and I've decided on UNC Charlotte. That's where I'm going. Then at the end, they're going to ask for your transcript, and you'll be like, I already sent that. Yes, but you sent it when it had your junior grades on it, 
and some other stuff, but it didn't have your final thing or your graduation date. So now they need your final official one. So that's something that will help you with later in May, like after you've decided on which college and you're starting the, like the enrollment process. Yeah. Okay. But these transcripts, some of y'all are in college classes too. Yes. So if you're in some college classes, whether you're early college or whether you're doing dual enrollment, those CCP classes, that means you have a college transcript also. Yeah. So you got your high school transcript and then you got your college transcript. They need it too. Cause they need to see which classes you took. So they make sure they give you credit for them. So you have to also send your college transcript. And when you send that, you can send it through um, our website, the CCC website. If you Google Cleveland Community College transcripts, it'll pop up the page. And if you do it that way, you do have to pay, I think it's 650 per transcript you send. So let's say you applied to four schools and they're asking for your college transcript, you can send it. I can mail it to them for free. If you email me and say, Ms. Thomas, you have permission to send my college transcripts. Will you send it to these schools? I will call my records office here. I will ask them to send it. They will mail it for free. The only hitch with this is the way they do it here is a little bit slow or old school. I don't know what happens, but somehow it doesn't always, the schools sometimes are like, I never got it because I guess it came in snail mail and they didn't find it. I don't know what happens. So if that happens, I can send them through the mail. And then if they don't get them, then you'd be like, well, I'll go in and do it digitally, you know, and pay the 650 and they'll get it almost immediately. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. But again, we can talk you through, we can talk you through that later too. Okay. All right. Um, so you're going to apply for institutional scholarships. Um, so one thing I want to tell you is as far as scholarships are concerned, me and Mr. Collett get a little bit upset. Because in April, a bunch of seniors come to us and say, oh, I need to apply for scholarships. I'm going to tell you what, by April, too late. By spring, too late. Now is the time we're focusing on scholarships, okay? So what we're going to do as far as scholarships, my number one my number one tip for you as far as scholarships is whatever colleges you're applying to, I'm just going to pick and say Western Carolina, East Carolina, and UNC Wilmington. I'm applying to those three schools, okay? I am going to go and look and make sure they don't have a separate scholarship application. Because some schools I apply, I'm going to get into the college, awesome, but there's another application where they ask even more and they find out a little bit more about my grades and all that kind of stuff, and that makes me eligible for scholarships. And you don't want to miss out on scholarships at the colleges. So let's say you apply, you do the scholarship application for all of those. Now, you might check one of those schools and it says, oh, your general application just for admission to the college, that's all we look at. We don't need a separate. And you're like, oh, thank goodness. So there's not a separate college application, I mean, a scholarship application. But sometimes they do have separate ones, okay? App State, I'm glad he pulled that up. I had an experience a few years ago when I very first started TRIO and did not know what I was doing. I had a top-notch student. He should have gotten a full ride, okay? And he comes to me, and we're talking about it. He wants to go to App State. We do the application and all that. I didn't know that at Appalachian, you apply to school the first application deadline, which was November 1st. You have to submit the scholarship application by November 15th. It was two-week window is all. And I didn't know about it. And he came to me like, no, the 16th or something. And I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, we missed the deadline. So I called them. I'm like, y'all, this kid is awesome. He's got, he's going to get a big scholarship. Like we have to, sorry, no mercy. They do not care. A deadline is a deadline at these schools. And when I tell you they don't care, they don't care. They have a bazillion people applying. And if you miss the deadline, out of luck. So please, the, the main thing is the first application deadline to apply for admission to the college means that you're in, in order for scholarships and then check for a scholarship application, okay? Most of the colleges y'all are interested in probably have a November 1st, first application deadline. If any of you are interested in Chapel Hill, it's October 15th, right? October 15th. So, uh, I think Winston-Salem State has an October 15th deadline if you're interested in certain scholarships. So we want to check for those deadlines and if you don't know or you can't find it, I will look it up for you, okay? Right? I'll look it up for you. But we're going to, in our minds, think we got to get all of our applications in before, I would say, mid-October. And then we're going to check for scholarship applications at those colleges, okay? 
Now, let's say you get offered uh, scholarships from all three of your colleges. This one's going to give you this much money. This one's going to give you this much money. This one's gonna... Now, you get to look and decide, where do I want to go? Let me just think about this, right? Where's the money being offered? What's my dream school? Am I willing to pay a little more to go here? Or should I just go to the cheapest one or whatever? But you got options. It's good to have options, Okay. So that's what I want you to know about scholarship yeah. stuff. And then the final scholarship thing. Yes. And one more thing about scholarships. There is for me in my head, and I tell my students, it's broke up into three different little seasons, right? You got application season, scholarship season, and you got award season. Okay, you're going to get done your applications and then you're going to want to go to cookout every weekend and relax and chill and do nothing. Right. Because you're going to be like, I applied. I'm good. And then. March is going to hit, and you're going to get those award letters, and you ain't going to have no money to pay for college. Mm -hmm. So don't miss the season from October all the way to March when you should be applying to scholarships. Don't be sitting back chilling. I need you to apply for scholarships, as many as you possibly can. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Make sure you do. Don't come to me talking about, I apply for one, Mr. College, the McDonald's one. And, and it. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? All right. So last one, apply for scholarships at your high school and at scholarship websites. So at your high school, what you can do is um, the – there we go. We got it right there. So on your school websites, and you, we have them there where you can access them on our website, but some of y'all may have already been on there. Your guidance counselors have went to – very, they've went to a lot of work. They've went through a lot of information, put it on there for you so you can see what scholarships are available. So when you get on those websites, they'll have scholarships listed. They'll have the deadlines. They'll have how you can apply, how you know if you qualify for it. So go on the websites for your schools to make sure that you can apply for some scholarships. That's one way to apply for scholarships, okay? And there will be a general scholarship application for each school, right? Right? So each school has a general scholarship application. That basically means that their schools, each school has a bunch of people who have donated money to them, right? And they've donated that money because they want seniors to be able to afford to go to college. And so then you'll have awards night. And then on awards night, you'll be given and awarded scholarships, right? And it's because you filled out this general scholarship application, and that makes you available to have access to to some of these scholarships. It doesn't guarantee you these scholarships. It's not a guarantee, right? But you are like throwing your name in the hat to be able to apply for these. Now, what will happen is some of them, if you do the general scholarship application, you instantly get applied to it, right? Just by doing the general scholarship application. Some of them, the guidance counsel will send out an additional email and say, if you filled out your general scholarship application and you want to apply for so-and-so scholarship, it, that scholarship page is now open for you to apply to. And then you got to go in and apply. And that means you got to check your what? Email. There you go. You got to check your email to make sure you don't miss that money. Okay? So listen. Not checking your email will make you miss out on some money. So don't do that, okay? Now, the other thing as far as scholarships go is we have them on the site there. You can go to these private websites, okay, um, that are ran by these companies, and they have all these scholarships listed, and you can apply for them, okay? And so the great thing about it is you go in, and when you click on one, it'll say, hey, this is how much money you can get. This is what you need to do to apply. This is how you qualify for it and then you go in and apply and you apply for as many as you possibly can okay so that's that's web the other one i like is um it's on there it is i forget what it's called there it is right there yeah yeah there it is yeah career one stop so career one stop you can actually sort them out according to different things okay and so you go in you click on it you look at it it gives you information on it it lets you know how you can apply it lets you know where the funding's coming from it lets you know when the deadlines are if there's an essay do you need recommendation letters it lets you know all that stuff and then you apply for as many as possible okay listen here's the thing Everybody eyeball me because now we're getting toward the end and y'all looking at me and y'all like, oh, Lord, all this information. And then there's another thing you can click on. And this Miss Thomas has has went like this is the last couple of years she's been putting this together and she has put in a lot of work to make sure 
there are scholarships in this trio database and you can go in there and it has all the information about how to apply the websites, the donor, how much money, how you qualify, if you qualify. OK, so there's tons of places to look for scholarships. OK, and it's all located on our website. Now, here, eyeball me. OK. Stop writing. Look, <laughs> look, look at me in the face. Look at me in the face. Listen. You need to carve out time to apply for scholarships. It ain't just going to happen. Don't say, oh, well, I'm going to do it tonight when I get home from the football game. Nah, that, you know that ain't going to happen. I'm going to do it this weekend. I'm going to do it this weekend. No. Put it in your calendar. I'm going to take an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, however long you want to. I'm going to do that a couple of times a week, two to three times a week. You need to take a couple of hours and just apply for as many scholarships as possible. And you need to do that all the way up until all the deadlines are gone. You need to be doing that. Don't stop doing it. OK, because you're going to get money, free money. Now, on this one, the trio one, and I'll, I'll need to go in and make sure some of these dates because I do it from year to year. But you see how I have it on due date? Mainly when you're trying to do scholarships, you want to make sure you don't miss deadlines. So I try to do them like rolling means it's always happening. OK, but when there's a deadline like the September 15th, well, gosh, that's next week. So if you're trying to apply for that one, then you got to get on there. And you got to do that quickly. And there's the online application to do the Gates Scholarship or whatever. When I have the eligibility here, if you go to a website and you're looking, it's going to tell you. But, for instance, this one says for the Gates Scholarship, a minority student eligible for free lunch, at least a 3.3 GPA. If that's not you, you're not eligible. Roll down. Okay? If you're not a minority student and it's a minority scholarship, move on. Right? Because, and you don't want to waste your time. And also, if it says you have to have at least a 3.5 GPA, 3 GPA and you got a 3.0, okay, that one's not for you. Move on. There's other ones for you. But don't waste your time. Like he said, do apply for all the ones you're eligible, for which you're eligible. But if you're not eligible, you don't have to waste your time. Okay. That was a lot of information. I'm really glad y'all were here to hear it. But I just need you to know we, we're here. Like, you can tell us anytime. Right now, I'm going to open it up for questions. We have a few minutes for questions. So if you have a question you feel like the whole group could benefit from, please ask it now. If you have one that's very specific to your situation, come up and ask one of us after. Does anybody have a very general question that you feel like would benefit? Yes. So the college, she's asking about the colleges that don't require test scores. So this year, it's test optional for North Carolina schools, like all within the UNC system. So UNC, and you can look up what are the public North Carolina universities, and it'll bring up a list. It'll say UNC, it'll say UNC in front of the A lot of them say UNC. Easy. Some of them do. Some of them don't like Western Carolina or East Carolina, NC State, A&T, Winston-Salem State. And then all those ones, UNC Wilmington, UNC Charlotte, UNC whatever. Okay. All those North Carolina schools, it is test optional if you are above a 2.6 weighted GPA. Okay. One more thing, just because I said that out loud, the weighted and unweighted, always put your weighted GPA unless they ask for unweighted. We want it to look the best, right? Always put your weighted GPA at less. Weighted means it's taken into account that it was an honors class or an AP class or a CCP class, all right? Some of y'all's weighted GPA is a 4.6 and your unweighted is 3.9. Oh, we want a 4.6 on there, right? So, yes. If you apply to college and you get a lot of scholarships this year, is that it? Do you mean you don't have to... Yeah, that's a great question. You apply for scholarships. Some of you might get enough scholarships in a full ride situation where you don't have to apply anymore. Some of you may get some money this year, but it may benefit you to look for the next year. Okay, now I'm at Appalachian State. Now they have scholarships for current students. And that will be a much easier, simpler process because there's way fewer of them and you're not applying to all the colleges and all that. That's always a great thing to do, to look at the school the next year or to look outside for other scholarships. Because, yes, there are more scholarships um, there also. Other questions? On one, on one website, they had, uh, individual high school scholarship. Yeah, we can go back to that. Yeah, so there's not an early college one on here. I need to see if Hux has one. And Hux is a really great resource for early college students. Do they have one? Or 
is similar to mine. Okay, some of the lists actually may be similar. You can look on the trio one, but that's a good point. Thank you. I'll look to make sure she doesn't have a list. She most likely has sent on the on the early college. Okay, so on the early college website, you can find her scholarship list on there. Um, a lot of you, your your guidance counselor is a great resource, but they have mm, three hundred students or whatever at some of the schools just seniors that they're trying to help so it's just hard for them so um we're another resource so i just want to be to make you aware of that um any other questions other questions please feel free to come up and ask us afterwards two things that i want to note is your needs assessment please either leave that right where you are or sit it somewhere on a table before you leave don't leave with it <laughs> i need it okay the other thing is this passport has a very simplified version of all the little steps we talked about tonight. As a TRIO senior, if you complete all these steps, that means you've enrolled in college. And it might be a little bit different um, based on where you're going and all that kind of stuff. But if you do this and you enroll in college, that's going to qualify you to go on our senior retreat this summer. And I'm going to make it nice. Okay, and our senior retreat is going to be an opportunity for you to get your mind right and prepare for going to college. And if you have ideas of where we should go on our senior retreat, I'm open for suggestions. Okay, so we're going to do a senior retreat, but we got we got to do all of this. Okay, one more thing is because you came, I want to give you a T-shirt. Jada's got one right back there that she can show you. We have this really lovely trio shirt. It's got trio on the sleeve. We want we want to give one to you so you can represent trio. Now listen. Don't go wearing a trio shirt and act like a fool, okay? Act like you got some sense if you're wearing a trio shirt around, all right? But I would love to give you a trio shirt. Downstairs, Stephanie has those sitting out based on the t-shirt the size you gave us when you came in. So if you'd like to go back through that room you came and get, got your food, you can pick up your t-shirt, okay? Can I say Other, one more thing? Yeah. Can I say one more thing? I, if you can make it fast. I can, I can okay. make it really fast. I've been doing good. Yeah, you're I've right. been doing really yeah. good. It's okay, interesting. look at me. Check this out. It's go time. Do y'all know that? It's go time. It's time to do it. This is what you've been building up for, right? This is why some of y'all been in trio since sixth grade. This is why you've been doing this, right? So you know how to apply. We've given you all the tools over these last couple of years, all the motivation. We've given you all the know-how. You've worked it out so you have the right grades to get into a school. Now it's time. Don't give up now. You've worked so hard, right? If you've worked this hard, why give up now, right? Keep putting in the work. Don't give up. Your body and your brain is going to tell you to give up at some point. And you tell your body and your brain, I'm not giving up because this hurts. And if it hurts, I'm going to get something from it. I'm not going to let it hurt and then don't finish the application. Don't get no money. No, it's going to hurt and I'm going to get all kind of money. It's going to hurt and I'm going to apply to five different schools. It's going to hurt and I'm going to get into the school I want to get into. It's going to hurt and I'm going to get something from it. So listen. Listen, work as hard as you possibly can, because listen, you're going to look back on this moment and how you're preparing and how you're learning and all the things you're doing right now. I'm telling you, you're going to be able to pass it on to the next person. You're going to pass it on to your child. You're going to pass it on to your grandchild. You're going to pass it on to some other person who doesn't understand and you're going to be at college with them and they're going to say, I need scholarships. I need this. I need that. I don't understand. You're going to say, I got you, dog. Sit on down. Let me break it down for you. OK. And if you feel stuck and if you have a question. And if you don't know something, Hit what are you going to do? You're going to email me. All right. Thank you very much for coming, y'all. Let me know if you need something. You can stop by and ask a question. Leave those on the table. Okay? Really proud of y'all. We're really proud of y'all. Go get it.